Welcome to the first members video. And before we get into the video itself, I want to thank you for becoming members. We really appreciate your financial support. Um, we've been doing this 17 years and we've had lots of people over those years uh, help us out, uh, support our journalism. And we are very thankful that you are doing that. So thank you very much. The purpose behind these membership videos is to members only videos is to give you a little insights into you know how we do things, what we're doing, what's coming up, little stuff that doesn't make it into our normal you know news stories, um, and and what's we're working on that you'll see more of, but you're going to get it first, and that's what I've got today for this first video is we've been working on an idea. And we've been kind of test driving it here and there with experts and, you know, doing more research. And I, I always hate, the, it's a big world, right? There's a lot of people working in the, the energy field. You hate to say, we got it first, we did it first. But I don't think anybody has quite captured it the way we have to date. And here it is. The real revolution in this energy transition is not wind, solar, and batteries. It's not how you make electricity. We've been making electricity for 125 years. Uh, in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, where I lived for a number of years, uh, they had uh, an old part of the, the sort of the carcass of an, uh, a hydro station. Uh, the North Saskatchewan River runs right kind of through the city, actually. And, and you know, it's a big river, and they were going to dam it up, and they, that's how they were going to uh, electrify the, the city and they ran into problems and, you know, as it turned, you know, whatever. The, the project failed, saddled the city with a bunch of debt. I think it took them like 50 years to pay it off. And, but that kind of technology has been like back to 1911 when that project started. It's been around a long, long time. But you know what we haven't been able to electrify is the demand side. I mean, sure, we had electric cars you know, 110 years ago, but they used lead acid batteries and, you know, they couldn't go very far, lost their charge, couldn't go very fast uh, and didn't go anywhere. That's why the internal combustion engine one is because the combination of an inefficient combustion engine, but really, really energy dense gasoline proved to be better than the combination of an electric motor and a battery. Well, not anymore. Now the lithium ion batteries just changed everything. The energy density is so much higher. The cost has come down there. I don't have to tell you about batteries. It's a common story by now, but it's not just electric vehicles. It's electric everything. Devices that take electricity and turn it into work. So the electric motor and the turns the EV into transportation. But the same thing is true with the electric bike that's sitting in my garage. After I finish this video, I'm going to go for a ride. And it it's the uh, school bus, the transit bus. Over in Asia, two and three wheelers are extremely important. I mean, there's this like, you know, 1.4 billion of them or something in China. I mean, it's an enormous number and they're all electrifying. Um, excavators, uh, work equipment, um, long haul trucking, medium trucking. None of that was possible before, but now it is. It's on the demand side. And look at buildings. I mean, heat pumps are the innovation in, in uh, buildings, but now they're adding AI. I did a story with a company down in, in the US. They're adding AI to HVAC so that they, the AI gets data from sensors in all the rooms and it cools some, heats others. It's, it's more efficient and leads to you know, more comfortable uh, buildings, it's, 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 it's a revolution. It, it's, a, it's absolutely amazing. And in, in an industry, you've got industrial processes, many of them using industrial heat pumps, but you can make low to medium uh, uh, temperature heat that are used uh, for industry, whether it's steel making or something, uh, you know, a little lower, like we had the Rondo heat battery folks on one of our webinars, and, and that was great. Uh, so th this is the, the implications of this are that we need to sort of rethink how we talk about the energy transition. And instead of worrying about, um, getting wind and solar 
and storage on grids, on the supply side, what we really should focus is getting these electric devices into the hands of consumers and doing it as cheaply as possible. That will, not only will it electrify the economy, I mean, it'll lower emissions, yes, that would take that for granted, but it will increase the efficiency and I would argue increase productivity, make uh, Canadian businesses, uh, would, you know, I guess it goes for the United States as well, make them more competitive. If you're lowering your costs, you're increasing your efficiency, then you should be more competitive, right? So that this is something that we're going to be uh, exploring different aspects of it. We'll get some, you know, our, how we usually do things. We'll scour the internet for reports from the IEA or Bloomberg or wherever, and we'll talk to experts and explore the different ideas. But this is one, really keep your eye on this one, because it's the key, I think, to uh, the changes that are happening in the global energy system and the emergence of China as an electro state and the problems that the U.S. Is, are having by doubling down on, on, uh, on uh, fossil fuels through Donald Trump. And in Canada, we have, you know, a prime minister that wants to be in Canada, make Canada an energy superpower in both conventional and unconventional. So now he's talking about conventional and, un, and clean, I guess. And you know, he's talking about more oil and gas. Maybe not, because the electrification of demand will lower uh, the demand for oil and gas in combustion devices. That's where we're headed. And we're headed at a breakneck speed that we had never seen before. And that's because China has scaled up manufacturing, driven costs down, made the technology actually better than combustion devices, and people can't get enough of them. And not just people in China, but people all over the global south, where China is exporting these devices to. Watch for that one, and uh, I'd encourage you, uh, send in our, you know, comment here. Um, uh, you can email uh, MC from our team, uh, mc at energy.media, E-N-E-R-G-I dot media, and uh, ask questions. If you got any ideas, maybe you've come across some kind of electric device, you know, something that they have in Europe or Asia that, that you've seen, uh, um, why don't we have it here, that, that sort of stuff. But give us your feedback, your members, we pay more attention to you, uh, and uh, look forward to the next video.